When it comes to scraping websites, there are a million ways to do it. Python, Ruby, even C++ and Java have web scraping libraries and examples. But there's one language that stands out with its simplicity and ease of use. That language is JavaScript. I built a web scraping app in only a handful of lines of code with Node.js and Puppeteer. And that's it. In this video, I'm going to show you exactly how I did it. But first, let's talk about web scraping in general and why I wanted to scrape the web in the first place. Now, there are many potential reasons why someone might want to scrape websites. For me, I'm super lazy and I want to keep up to date with all the latest and greatest React news, but I don't want to constantly visit all the websites necessary in order to get the information to read. And like any good lazy software engineer, I wrote some code for myself to automate this task. Basically, I wrote JavaScript code that will scrape three of my favorite blogs to give myself a compilation of React news at any given point in time. To get started, I'm going to be using Yarn. So let's create a new directory and run yarn init. This will bring you through a wizard that will create your package.json file amongst other things. Now for this project, I'm going to be using ASDF to manage my Node.js versions. So I'm also going to create a dot tool versions file and set my local instance of Node.js to version 18.12.0. If you're using NVM or any other node version manager, make sure to follow those directions as well. But I'm using node version 18. Next, we're going to want to install a library called Puppeteer. Now, Puppeteer is really interesting. Essentially, what it allows you to do is render websites with an inline embedded Chrome instance. Essentially, websites get rendered as if they're in Chrome itself. And this is really powerful because it allows you to crawl single page applications, which would otherwise be very cumbersome or impossible to do in other libraries. You could also do other interesting things like automate form submission, UI testing, keyboard input, and other stuff as well. To install this, you merely have to run yarn add puppeteer and you're off. Now let's test out some of puppeteer's functionality in the new JavaScript file. First, we want to import puppeteer from puppeteer that'll import the library and all the helper functions. Then we want to set a URL to one of the blogs that we want to visit. This time we're going to use Josh Como's blog. It's great and he's just so awesome. Next, let's create an asynchronous function to test out some of puppeteer's features. We want to set up a new browser by calling puppeteer.launch. We want to create a new page object by calling await browser.new page. Then we want to go to the URL by calling page.go to and passing in that URL as an argument. Next, let's just take a screenshot of the page that we see by calling page.screenshot and giving it a path as an argument. Then finally, we want to close our browser object so we don't leave behind any zombie processes. Then if we call this function, what's going to happen is we will see a screenshot of the page that we visited. Pretty cool but we're gonna to wanna to be doing a lot more than just taking screenshots if we wanna aggregate our favorite blog's data. If we look at Josh Como's blog and inspect the source, we can see that all the articles show up as article elements. Within each article element, we have an anchor tag that gives us a link to the article and an H3 that gives us the title of the article. This seems like a really good place to start. So let's go back to our code and do something a little bit different. We wanna start off the same way with our browser object, our page, and we want to go to the URL within our page's context. Then what we wanna do is actually query the page once it is loaded. So we wanna set a new variable of all of our articles and we wanna await a page.evaluate function. Now what this does is it waits for the page to load and it calls functions within this page's context. We can query for all of our articles by calling document.querySelectorAll on the article element. What this will do is it'll give us a list of of nodes that we can then query further for more information. Then we want to create a new array from the article nodes that we have. We want to slice this to a maximum of three articles because we don't have all day to read. And then let's map over each node. Within each node, we want to extract the title by doing query selector h3 because that's what we saw in the page source and call inner text on that. And for the URL, we can call a query selector for the anchor tag and call the href property on that. And then we want to return the title and the URL. And at the bottom of this function, let's just console log what we get. And if we run this function, we can see that we get all the information from this blog. The first three posts show up with the title and the URL. Really cool. Now we can do something similar to another blog we like. I like the overreacted.io blog by Dan Abramoff, and I like to keep up to date with it. So let's inspect the source, and we can see that it's extremely similar to Josh Como's blog. We have a list of articles with a header, an H3, and an anchor tag with a link. So it looks like we could write very similar code to what we had before. 
So let's go back to our code base and write some code to extract data from the overreacted blog. Now, before we do anything, let's do a little bit of refactoring. We're going to have two separate blogs that we want to get data from. So let's split those off into two different files. We want to make one for Josh Como's blog and another one for Dan Abramov's overreacted.io blog. In the Josh Como blog, we can just copy and paste all of our code we wrote in the index.js file because that is exactly what we need for that blog. And we want to export a function from there so we can import it into our index.js file to run it with other blogs. Next, we want to create a new file for overreacted and we want to write almost the same exact code. Actually, it is the same exact code. Let's refactor that later. But to test this out, let's export another function from the overreacted.io blog and then import those functions into the index.js file. Now, if we have both functions in index.js and we run them, we can see that we get information from both blogs. Awesome, but we don't wanna leave it just at this. So let's refactor this a little bit more. What we can do is we can extract this code into a new function called blog scraper. So let's create a new file for blog scraper. And essentially what we're gonna do here is create a new function that takes some arguments. We're gonna take the URL, we're going to take the elements that we want to search for, and we want to take the title element that we want to search for as well. This is the H3 tag in both of these blogs. Now we can just modify some of our code to take in some arguments. We want to take in the all elements selector argument and the title selector argument. And we go through our code, we replace some variables with these new arguments, and the page.evaluate function takes arguments as a second argument. So what we can do is put our new values that we want to search the page for as those arguments. Now what we want to do is go back to each of our blog files and replace the code with our new blog scraper function, passing in the relevant arguments that we need. And if we run this from index.js, we get the same exact thing. Awesome, everything's working. Now let's add the third blog to our list of blogs we're extracting data from using web scraping. I like swizek.com and I love keeping up to date with it. So let's inspect elements and we can see that, well, this one's a little bit different. We don't have any article elements that we can key off of, but I noticed that there is a list of divs with the same exact class. These look like they are generated, so I'm not sure if this is gonna stay the same throughout the life of this project, but it's a good place to start until we figure out something better. Inside these divs, we see that there are anchor tags that we can take the links from, and we have h2 tags, which are the titles of these posts. Let's go. So now let's go back and write some code to scrape some data from this blog as well. We want to create a new file for Swizak called swizak.js. We want to import the same things, puppeteer and our new blog scraper function. We want to set our URL to the correct thing. And let's create a new async function called Swizak. This function will return our new blog scraper function and we want to pass in our URL and the new div class that we want to search for, plus the anchor tag that we want to search for as well. If we export this function and then import it into our index.js file, we can run everything and see that we get data from all three blogs. How awesome is that? Now there's a lot of things we can do with this information and that's something I'm going to show you in a further video. So be sure to like and subscribe if you want to see more on this series. And if you want to see something cool with configuring your NeoVim configuration like I have here, check out this video. And hey, I hope you have a great day.